Video game localization is an important topic that can improve the chances of your game becoming successful and even provide a major boost to your sales numbers. In previous videos I talked about why you should localize your game and what languages to localize to. But if you haven't ever localized a game before, you might be curious, how do you actually localize a game in practice? So in this video I will show you step by step how you can localize your game in Unity starting from the very beginning. Towards the end of the video, I will also give my advice on how to prepare your game for localization, even if you are not yet sure whether or not you will actually localize the game. By doing this, you will save a lot of time if you eventually do decide to localize your game. Hi, my name is Auro, I'm a solo India game developer and I'm the creator of a game called Mortal Glory. On top of that, I also make this weekly YouTube videos sharing my experiences to help you with your own game dev journey. This video especially took quite a bit of time to make, so I would really appreciate if you left a like for the YouTube algorithm. Now, let's jump into the topic. Mortal Glory is made in Unity and to help with the localization process, I used this Unity asset called i2 localization. There are other assets also that can do the same, but at least this one has served me just fine. There might also be some alternative ways to localize your game, but I will just focus on showing you how I did it, as it has worked well for me so far. First of all, let's quickly set up our localization asset. Add it to your project and then in the asset settings, let's add all the languages we want to support in the beginning. You can always add languages later on, so don't sweat it. Now let's go to the export section of the asset and we can get a ready-made template for our localization file. The next step in the localization process is to change every hardcore string in your game into a dynamic string. This includes every string in your code that will be visible in the game and also every string that you have set in the Unity editor. I'll show you how it's done. Let's start with the code side first. In the code you might have, for example, a simple if statement that changes the text object to say either you win or you lose, depending on the situation. To make these localizable, you will need to replace them with dynamic strings. So for example, ui.endscreen.win and ui.endscreen.lose. The names don't matter, but you will have a lot of dynamic strings, so try to go for something that's easy to recognize where it's used. Put these along with the English values into your localization sheet. Set the type as text for all of them. Next. Replace the hardcoded strings in the code with a method call that refers to these new dynamic strings. That's all. Now you just need to do it for every hardcoded string in your code. Also be mindful that if you are doing any string manipulation or string checks in your code, you will need to be careful and make sure that they function well after localization also. You should also avoid using strings like this. And instead, use strings like this. The reason being that for some languages the word order is different, so you will want to avoid any string manipulation that in essence locks the word order. It's also good to note that if your sentences have numbers that can change, in some languages the translation will be different based on what the number is going to be. That can be tackled with tags like this in the localization file. Okay, that's the code side. Let's take a look what the process looks like on the editor side. Overall, it's very similar, but with side differences. On the editor side, you will also need to locate your hardcore strings and come up with dynamic strings for them. Put them into your localization file along with the other strings. Do this for every hardcore string in the editor. Next, you will need to import your sheet file with the localization asset. But maybe quickly before that, let's just add some test translations to the sheet for your strings. Then let's go forward with the importing. Now the localization asset will have knowledge of all the dynamic strings you have created and what their counterparts are in the languages you have added. After this, in the Unity editor, we need to tell the localization asset where each dynamic string belongs. We do this by adding a localized script component that is provided by the asset. Then in the script, let's find the right dynamic string from the list. Great! Now repeat the process for every text object. Once you have gone through all the text objects in the editor, you are now ready to proceed. 
Since we already added some test translations, we can now verify that they show up properly within the editor. Looking good. This is pretty much everything you will need to do within your game to prepare for localization. The process is quite simple. It can just be very time consuming if you have a lot of hardcore strings in your game. You will also inevitably forget some strings that only rarely show up in your game and then need to go back and get those translated separately. I can speak from experience. Now, the next step is to find a translator or most likely several translators to translate all the text in your localization file. Translators come in many forms with varying levels of quality and price. It's so great I found an experienced translator like you. So how would you translate this over here? Uh, okay, uh, so how do you spell that? Okay, hmm. If your budget is low, you could try getting help from a fan of the game, one of your international friends or maybe a translation student who is seeking experience. On the other hand, if your budget is high, the easiest would be to just give your sheet file to a bigger translation company and let them handle all the translations. If your budget is somewhere in the middle, you could try looking for cheaper individual translators. This is what I did and I used a site called Fiverr for the majority of it. I picked one translator for each language I wanted to translate to. In most cases, the translation quality was good, but there were also some lower quality ones that had to be improved further. It would be best if you can find translators who actively play games themselves. This will help with them getting the context right in their translations and they will be more familiar with the terminology. Once you have found your translators and agreed on the price, you are now ready to proceed. But before that, you might want to add some comments to your sheet to help the translator do his or her work. This could be adding some notes about the context of the text, listing your instructions or whatever else that might be useful for the translator. It's also a good idea to have a separate translation file for each translator and then combine those into your actual game localization file. At least I feel like this decreases the risk of making mistakes with the files. Once you have done that, you are now ready to give your file to the translator and let him or her get to work. If they have any questions at the start or at any point of the process, make sure to give them good answers and maybe even encourage them to ask questions. The translators that ask questions are more likely to get the context right and produce better quality translations. Before we move on to the next step, I'll also mention that one cheap or free alternative would be to get a machine to translate your game. I don't have experience on how good the quality is with currently available services, so I cannot comment much on the viability of that option. But these services are constantly getting better and better, so at some point they definitely might be the most optimal solution. Anyway, let's get back to the human translation. A bit of time has passed and the translators have now turned into their translations. Now is the time to check the quality of the translations. If you don't know the language, as is likely, it might be hard to properly verify the quality. The best scenario would be if you could get a friend who knows the language to take a look. You could also pay someone to do the verification for you. But that of course will strain your budget more and you don't have any guarantees how good of a job the other person will actually do in verifying the translations. Luckily, there are also many things you can do yourself to verify the quality even if you don't know the language. I will now list some of those. You can check that there aren't missing translations. You can check for technical errors in the file, like letter case issues, extra spaces, broken tags and things like that. Constantly broken tags are a sign that the translator has used a program to help with the translation. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it could also be a warning sign that the translator has just let a machine do the translating. So be extra mindful of the quality. You can check that there aren't issues with duplicate translations. Sometimes a duplicate translation might be technically correct, but it will be confusing for the player if the same term is used to mean two different things. Speaking of terms, you can verify that the same translation is used for the same term in different places. Based on my experience, term inconsistency is a common issue and can be very confusing for the player. You can check that some of your special terms have translations that seem correct. For example, your translations might include the name of your game or names of characters. You might want to check how they look. 
Some terms might also be hard to translate, like buff and debuff, for example. So you might want to check how terms like that are translated and discuss it with the translator. You can do spot checks with Google Translate to verify that the translations are completely wrong or missing a part of the sentence. There are surely other things you can do also, but these are all that come to my mind at the moment. As you can see, there are a lot of things you can do to verify the quality, but it can be a lot of work. Don't feel pressured to spend ages in order to make the translations perfect, as that is impossible. Even if you do everything I mentioned and more, there will always be some mistakes left, and that is okay. If the mistakes are minor, most players won't care, and if the mistakes are major, the players will let you know about them so you can fix them. It all works out in the end. But of course, I do recommend spending at least some time to make sure the translations are not riddled with errors. Now that you have all the translations and you have verified their quality, it's time to add them to your main localization file and import them into your game. Let's quickly check that the translations are working. It seems so. Great. Once you have done this, there are still a few things you want to do within Unity. The first thing is Making sure your game supports different alphabets. From what I can tell, the default Unity text component supports different alphabets out of the box as long as you are using a proper font. I have a feeling that it can't be that easy though, but I am only using TextMesh Pro, so I cannot comment much on the default Unity text component. Anyway, if you are using TextMesh Pro like I am and want to support languages like Chinese and Russian, you will need to do some additional steps. Otherwise, if you go check your Chinese translation, you will just see boxes like this. These are called Tofu characters. Tofu or not, they are not very player friendly. In order to support different alphabets, you will need to create new font assets for TextMesh Pro. There is a surprising amount of depth when it comes to fonts and a lot of details to tinker with, but there's no need to get overwhelmed by all the details. Let me walk you through how the basic process goes. First, you need to have your basic font file. You will need to have a font that supports characters from other alphabets. Most fonts only support Latin characters, so if you are already using a custom font in your game, you will most likely need a new font for some of the languages. Google's Noto is a good free font that supports all common alphabets. So let's use that in our example. I am also using it in Mortal Glory, by the way. Next, we want to know which characters we need to support with our font. Unfortunately, you cannot support every character in every alphabet. Even Chinese by itself has over 50,000 characters. That is a huge burden for your font asset. Luckily, we can usually get by with much less. There's a handy tool in the i2 localization asset that we can use to extract all the unique characters that are used in our localization file. Let's use that to tell us which characters we need to support. If you are supporting user input by having a name input, for example, you will need to support more characters than just the ones in your localization file. But let's go with just the ones in our localization file for now. Great, that looks more manageable. Let's generate our font atlas and save it as a font asset. If the font looks good in the game, you won't need to touch any of the settings in this window, but if your font ends up blurry or has some other issues, you might need to tinker with the settings, most likely to change the atlas resolution. Increasing this will increase the resolution of your characters, but will also increase the size of your font asset. Also, if your game has a lot of text and you want to support many languages with different alphabets, it's a good idea to create several different font assets. For example, in Mortal Glory, I have five different font assets. One for Latin characters, one for Chinese, one for Japanese, one for Korean, and then one for Russian and Polish. This is to ensure that the characters for each alphabet look crisp in the game. If you are going to use only one font asset file, congrats! You are now done with the font stuff and in your text objects, you just need to have that font asset selected. But if you are going to use more than one font asset, there's still one more thing you need to do. You now have font assets that support different alphabets, but you still need to tell the localization asset when to use each font asset. To do this, you need to go to the secondary tab of the localized script. In here, it will automatically offer your font asset as a localization term. 
Let's give it what it wants and create a localization term for it by pressing the button. Now in here, let's add the proper font assets for each language. That's it. You could also set the type to material if you want to have a bit more customizability with your fonts. But let's not get into that any deeper now. When you have set your font assets, you will want to export your localization file, so the font localization settings will also remain in it if you need to re-import your localization file. Next, you want there to be some way in your game to change the language. Let's just add a few simple buttons and then in each, let's add a set language script provided by the localization asset. Just set the proper language in each script and have the button call the script when clicked. That's all. As a final thing in the editor, you should make sure that all the new translations fit as they should. Some languages can take a lot more space than others, so this is an important step. I found that the easiest solution is just to set your text to auto size and set the size limits as needed. Okay, we are now done. That should be everything you need to do. Of course, there can be some issues you still need to tackle, but these are all the basic steps. It can be quite a bit of work, but in most cases it will be worth it. Before we stop, maybe let's still quickly talk about how to prepare for localization if you are not yet sure if you are actually going to localize your game. This is probably a common situation. By preparing already in the beginning, you can reduce your workload a lot if you later on do decide to localize your game. Ideally, you would like to start using dynamic strings from the very beginning, even if you only have English included in the list. But if you think it's too much of a hassle, you could also make notes to yourself where you have included hard-coded strings. On code side, you can add notes to yourself that you can then easily search later on. When you are doing string manipulation in your code, you should know that the sentence structure can be different in other languages, so try to account for that. When you are designing your UI, avoid cramming text and leave some extra space as some languages will require more space than others. And finally, it might also be a good idea to already pick a font that supports different alphabets when you are starting out. Okay, that's everything I can think of for now. Maybe you can come up with some of your own ways to prepare now that you have seen what the localization process looks like in practice. If you do, let me and the others know by leaving a comment. I really hope this video was helpful to you. Let me know if there was something that you would still have liked to hear more about. Alright, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.